Um, what do I do? Um, the cover is not Hi everybody, <laughs> I'll let you into a little secret. When I start my video I find it so hard to get going. I pretty much say hi, maybe like 19 times on average, I'm like hi, hi, hi everyone. Hey friends, hi. <laughs> ah, I need to just be more efficient and be like, hi. Today's video, okay, so hi. Today's video is all about how you can find your tribe, how you can strengthen community and find joy and power and connection. How was that for efficient? And that's because after last week's video, the biggest theme in the comments and questions was all about how you build community and I thought that was kind of really interesting because that was kind of a small part of the video and I'm super excited to talk about it because community is basically one of the most important things about our family's life and you might notice that I've used the word tribe and for ages I didn't use it because I didn't want to culturally appropriate a word that is so important and so meaningful to many marginalized indigenous communities and then I was talking with a friend and he was like what you were talking about this community if it's about really deeply connecting growing together learning together needing each other that is the true meaning of a tribe. And the word tribe also does something handy because it does make us think about our ancestors. Because whoever you are, wherever you come from, somewhere far, far back in your lineage, you will have ancient family members who have truly lived and experienced their tribe. And it's because of this that we have deep within us a longing to belong and a vast emptiness when we're not getting that need met so for like all of human history we've actually needed each other to survive like practically we've had to hunt forage build until very recently it wasn't really a question of oh whether you feel like it it was actually a matter of living or or dying and because of that we developed all these other ways of being with each other as well to sort of counterbalance the kind of hard work of it such as singing, dancing, sharing stories. All of those things have been part of a tribal life. And these days, of course, we don't really need each other for survival on a kind of physical level. And so all these other things have slipped as well, the kind of sharing of food and moving our bodies together and, and sharing song and being vulnerable and crying together. These days that stuff only happens if you're drunk. And I really feel like our neighbourhoods and our personal lives are at a massive deficit without all of that stuff. I think that heaps of the kind of current dissatisfaction is to do with a real lack of this connectedness. I was reading recently that something like 50% of people are lonely a large amount of the time. What a heartbreaker of a fact that is. So pretty much since I was 18, I've probably lived 80% of my life living in some form of intentional community. So I moved into my first shared home when I was 18 and now we, we co-own a farm with another family and we've done, Tim and I have done all sorts of different expressions of that in between and I've found that living in community brings me more joy, makes me braver, it's a source of strength and creativity, together we're able to make our dreams happen and it allows me to live more authentically. I've got a bit of a theory about authenticity, I feel like authenticity isn't are you being authentic today? It's more like how deeply are you connected with yourself and the people around you today. And so if we ever feel like a crisis of authenticity, I feel like the first place to turn is to look deeply at our connection with ourselves and each other. I don't know, random theory of mine, but I want to hear from you if that resonates. So I'm a big fan of community living and I don't just mean like intentional communities, like hardcore living with each other. I'm talking about all sorts of forms of community so just you know your neighborhood or your learning community or your running club or you know all these different expressions of community all of those things are, are ways for you to 
meet this deep down urge for connection that, that we're all built with. And I'm no legend at it, I'm such a strong mix of like really extrovert and really introvert. Some days I'm like, where are my people, woo! And then some days I'm like, I don't want to leave my house. I couldn't possibly have a conversation with someone right now. It's so scary. But I think whether you're an introvert or, or an extrovert, I think that this need still exists and it's more about how we manage how we care for ourselves and have our boundaries and have enough time alone and enough time with this sense of belonging. But I'm just gonna share a few of the things that I've learned over the years. So first of all, how do you find your community? How do you find your tribe? Well, there's two ways these days. Uh, the first is to go to your is to go to a notice board in your town so it might be at your local organic shop or the supermarket and you just look for posters of events. One of our current communities we found the, the first month that we turned up in New Zealand by going to a town and seeing a poster on the wall for an equinox party, an equinox celebration at the community gardens and we were just like yeah I bet there'd be some cool people there and we just took the little address and we turned up and I think one of my kids got into a massive brawl right in the middle of the sacred ritual thing and it was a bit like oh my god but through that gathering we met all of these friends that are now our fast friends now. So yeah, look on notice board for, for events that seem to kind of like sparkle with interest for you. And then turn up, just become a turner upper. And then when you turn up, don't necessarily expect the fizz. Some friendships are born on magical wings and you just find someone and you're like, oh my gosh, we should be friends. And I've got a few friends in my life like that, and then I've got a load of friends where there was no kind of like chemical romance. It was, we just kept turning up to things and now we are really, really good friends. So don't discount people just because you don't necessarily have an immediate like pyong. Just keep on turning up and these random strangers will become beloved. And then finally, just keep persisting. Persist through the awkwardness like conflict will come up, tension will come up in communities, but, but we've got to stick with it. We can't do a flounce if we really want to dive deep into this connection. If something is a problem, address it. The kind of bones of a community are formed when things aren't perfect, when things are tricky and you address it and you move through it. So persist, persist, persist. Okay, finally, I wanted to talk about five expressions of community that you could kind of dive into right now, going from easy to a little bit trickier, right? So first up, crap dinner parties. And that is where you just text your mates and you're like, let's have a crap dinner party, bring over some rubbish food and we'll just eat rubbish food and hang out together. And that just like takes the pressure off you having to make something totally gourmet and something you're really proud of. You can just turn up with like pesto pasta because the thing is about just eating together. So, so all of last year our neighbours held that weekly and this year we're doing it monthly on a full moon and we're going to have a campfire every full moon and a potluck. So that's number one. You can do that with anyone, your neighbours, your friends, whoever, anyone, just like bring them along, have a potluck crap dinner party. Okay, number two is uh, creating a moon circle. And this is like super charged, fast track community. So I have written a book about this, plug. You can get it if you want to. People found it helpful. <laughs> and it's basically getting together monthly with uh, women to purposefully come together and create sisterhood with each other and it's just like a supersonic thing because you've set the intention and you might come together sing have a sharing time maybe do some rituals but over the last year and a half since putting my book out I've heard from so many women who have managed to build these really beautiful intense communities through starting a moon circle and it's number two because in my book I'm like this is how you do it, so there's like a blueprint for it. Number three, I'm a massive fan of camps. So you know that I'm part of teams that do a lot of self-directed learning slash unschooling slash life learning camps. But my the easiest camp that I do all year is I just tell everybody a date and I ring ahead to a campsite to tell them that we're just about to book out all of the tent spots and all of the cabins and things 
Uh, so I ring ahead to the campsite and then I just put out on Facebook. It's like everybody just individually rings up and then we just end up on this same weekend just swimming in the hot pool, the kids learn to swim, we all just hang out with each other. Best fun ever and seriously no organising and it's just grown from maybe five families a few years ago to now being sort of 15 to 20 families that turn up just to hang out and camps are just like the absolute best for a deep dive into community such a big fan okay fourthly if you're like a gardenery type person i'm gonna this is kind of an example and a real life thing so um the world of permaculture is filled with like-minded people because it's about a holistic way of living your life and they have these things called a perma blitz which is like a, basically a big working bee to get to permaculturalize somebody's garden what an amazing way to connect with people so that whole world of permaculture highly recommend it for to find other people who just love strengthening communities but also just the concept of working bees working together on something as being like a real also another fast track to community uh, we had that weed camp last week and last year and it was like two weeks so we had woofers from all over the world come and help us just weed our land but we really intentionally cultivated community with them through having like a euphoric dance night and campfires and singing and it it was one of my favourite things that we did last year. It was just so, so amazing. Just deep community. So yeah, that idea of like working together. Turn up to working bees, organise working bees. Amazing. Okay, and finally, something that has come to our community that is so, so cool and I think is a bit of a thing. Vocal nosh. You get together, I mean you need like a musical person to sort of get this off the ground but you come together you eat together so you share some food and then you just learn three or four songs per night and this has just begun in our community on Sunday I didn't get to go to it because I was in Wellington to this at this other thing that I'll talk about but I'm so glad that it's here it's gonna happen monthly because those two things eating together and singing together are just like the best we sing at everything, our moon circle, our learning collective, our camps that we do here, any opportunity we're just like banging out a tune. <laughs> because something kind of almost mysterious happens I reckon when we create something together and we lift our voices um, to express ourselves. So if you've got a vocal nosh near you, highly recommend tapping into it and if not and you're a little bit musically inclined do take a little look and see if that could be something you might like to get off the ground in your neighborhood so i couldn't get to vocal nosh because i was at extinction rebellion meetings all weekend with other coordinators from all around the country who have come together as a kind of interim kind of coordinating team for Aotearoa here. So obviously Extinction Rebellion, we're a direct action group. We're trying to get us off the trajectory towards the ecological and climate catastrophe that we are zooming towards. We're all about action, but the flip side to the action is this thing called regenerative culture, which is essentially all about caring for each other. So wherever you find Extinction Rebellion, you will find a group of people who are really making space for each other's feelings, in particular our fears and our anxiety about what is happening in the world around us. There's just some really deep thought and motivation going into building these resilient communities to kind of get us through the next period of time. So if you're feeling lots of things about where the world is heading, what is happening around you, highly recommend checking out Extinction Rebellion both to turn your fear and rage into positive action but also to connect with a like-minded community of people who have space for you and your big feelings about this. I'd love to hear from you. I have a Patreon where I, I connect with them about some of my deeper thoughts about lots of bits and bobs. And I'm also on all the other dippity doodads around the internet. So you can check that out below. Wherever you are in the world, much love to you and stay radical. Mwah.